All right, so if you're into wild camping, bushcraft, any kind of going out, spending time in the outdoors, hopefully this video will benefit you. I've looked at other bushcraft sort of tips and tricks and things like that, and I've tried to pick things that aren't so common. So first things first, I want to talk about my sack. <laughs> now that, don't be offended, Swiss Army knife, S-A-K. So there's a whole bunch of modifications you can do to these, but one that I've not seen anybody do which is actually really, really useful for bushcraft if you use a ferro rod all the time for starting your fires. You take the tin opener and you put a 90 degree edge just on here, just with a bit of sandpaper. Like I, I think I started off with a file and then I went to sandpaper and you just literally back and forth like that and you end up with a nice sharp edge. And get a ferro rod out. It works really, really good. And the best thing about it is because it, if you look, because it locks back like that, you can put as much pressure on there as you want. So it also works for making fine wood shavings or just getting a really good spark. And see, because it's shorter than a bushcraft knife, you can get much closer to your tinder and you can, you know, make little tiny ones. This is a tiny little ferro rod as well, but yeah, it works really, really well, and I've started using it instead of my bushcraft knife because I think it works better. Which is surprising because it's stainless steel, and you'd think stainless steel wouldn't give as good a spark, but if it's got a nice sharp edge, it works great. So that is tip number one. All right, tip number two is about your sleeping bag. Ah, yeah, so I guess this is a couple of tips maybe all wrapped up in one, but first tip, make sure your sleeping bag is always stored in a dry bag because you know, you put your bag down in a thing you think is dry, but it turns out to be a little soggy puddle, and you know, usually your sleeping bag's in the bottom of your pack, so having it in a dry bag is essential for keeping it dry. <laughs> um, I usually, if I'm in a hammock or something like that, I'll put my hammock in the dry bag as well, and it just keeps everything good. Right, getting past that is all about having your inflatable pillow and a nice hat in the top of your sleeping bag. If you store it in the top of your sleeping bag, you will never forget it. If you pack it separately, guaranteed one time you'll be out in the woods and you'll go to get it and it won't be there. So yeah, that is my number one tip for sleeping because uh, if you don't have a hat, especially in winter, it's measurable. And even in summer, I tend to sleep with a hat on just to kind of, I don't know, it just feels more cozy. So that is tip number two. All right, tip number three is for your axe. Oh, yeah. So, um, ranger bands. Basically, bicycle inner tubes cut up into little thin strips. Put them on here, they protect your axe. Stop you, you know, if you over strike or anything like that. It really, really does help. And the reason I carry these, instead of having a leather sort of strap-on thing, around, <laughs> leather strap-on. <laughs> Woo, anyway, right. Is because they're great fire lighters. See if you're out and you're in a pinch, you know, it's raining, you can't get a fire going for whatever reason, maybe you just can't be bothered, and uh, you just pull one or two of these off, catch them. You, you need, do need a lighter for these because uh, trying to light them with a ferro rod just doesn't really work. But yeah, once you light them up, they burn for ages. It's not the best for the environment, it's not my favorite thing to do, but you know, if you can't be bothered, say, you know, you've been out for a couple of days. It's been bucketing down with rain, you just want to get a fire going. Yeah, they're great. And you could also use them for other things. You know, just the, the kind of second as elastic bands. A million uses. So that is tip number three. Aye, three. <laughs> tip number four is my grill. So I started life as a cake cooling rack. And they're really cheap, really lightweight. Much better than, like, I've seen people using, like, the grills out of ovens and things like that, where you can get the ones that you buy and they fold out and all that, and they're really fancy. I just find a cake cooling rack, it's super lightweight, it costs hardly anything, you get them for, like, a pound or two pounds, and they're just really good. Like, I've had my pot on here full of water, it never bends or buckles, and it's, it's this one's, I've had it for years, it lasts ages. All I've done is you get some gardening wire, wrap it around some key rings, and you just hook the keyrings over the end there like that. 
four corners come up to a carabiner at the top and then I've got that connected to another carabiner. The reason I've got two is because quite often I'll unhook the grill and just hook a pot straight onto this carabiner and I'll hang that from a tripod. A very handy setup and it takes up no room at all. The way I store it in my pack, it's hard to show you guys this, but I'll be honest, I, I put it in a carrier bag because I used to have a Gore-Tex bag that I stitched up out of an old bivvy bag and I was putting it in there and inside the bag it just got more and more dirty and covered in soot and icky and these bags are actually really handy you know I usually take my grill out when I'm starting the fire and what I'll do is I can sit on the bag gives me a nice waterproof seat and when I put my grill back in the bag or in my pack it doesn't get everything all dirty so yeah that is tip number four all right fifth and final tip is to take out with you wax paper. Now this is something that you never really see anybody talking about but it is so handy. See when you're cooking a lot of the time you're chopping up vegetables, you've got meat to put down somewhere, you can just put out a bit, gives you a nice clean work surface and frees up your chopping board, it's safer, you're not faffing about with big piles of chopped up spuds falling off into the mud and uh, this really really makes life a lot easier and if you want to get the fire going and you've not got any birch bark or anything like that this makes great tinder so you just scrunch up a bit it'll light dead easy with a ferro rod or obviously with a lighter whoosh you're sorted and it burns pretty pretty good i would say it almost burns as well as birch bark so really handy thing to have in your pack again takes up hardly any weight and well, I guess you could use it to sit on as well. Like you, there's, there's a million uses for it. Honestly, I'm still I'm still figuring out things with it, and uh, I just really really essential. <laughs> so there you go. There's my five random tips. Hope you enjoy this one. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you for the next one. Oh, and well, if you feel like it, you can subscribe too. That would be really handy. <laughs> I suppose we better go.